Welcome to the John and Heidi Show podcast. John and Heidi. Here's John and Heidi. Today is a special day, Heidi. Do you know what today is? What is today, John? I thought you'd never ask, Heidi. It is Wednesday. It is the fourth day of May. Uh, it's uh, Star Wars Day. It's May the 4th. Yeah, I knew that was coming. Yeah, yeah. It's also Bird Day. Happy birthday to oh you. Gosh. I won't sing the rest of it. I do that every year, and she doesn't like it. National Candied Orange Peel Day. National Orange Juice Day. Hey, we should have shared our Tropicana story today. Right? Tropicana has a new cereal they put out. Oh, that's probably why today's the day that they're announcing it's it. I bet that's so why. so bizarre. Okay. Anyway, we read it yesterday. Uh, it's a cereal that you're supposed to put orange juice in. Ugh. Gross. Anyway, if you want to do that for National Orange Juice Day. National Renewal Day. National Star Wars Day, which I mentioned. National Weather Observers Day. National Skilled Trades Day. National Inter... Interpreter Appreciation Day and National Bike to School Day. All of those things happening on this Wednesday. It's a big day. It is a big day. And I've got a guest, one of the writers of Family Guy. Yeah, the cartoon, Family Guy, Gary Janetti. He's one of the writers of that, and he's got a new book out. We're going to chat about it coming up. What can I say that I haven't already said about BetterCreditCards.com? It's a website. You go there to get a better credit card. Okay, that's really probably all I need to say for most of you, but... But I still have time left, so how about this? At BetterCreditCards.com, we have different kinds of credit cards, some with better points and perks, some designed to help you build your credit. Whatever stage of life you happen to be in, we want to help. Give yourself a little credit. BetterCreditCards.com. That's BetterCreditCards.com. Now, surveys and studies and such brought to you by Mintervention.com. Uh, this is going to make Heidi smile. Swinging your arms while running does nothing for your speed, according to a new study. <laughs> What is? I've seen some very weird runners. Well, it is commonly believed that arm swinging propels a runner forward and acts as a counterbalance to the momentum of the legs. Researchers from Southern Southern (laughs) Methodist University found that athletes who ran with their arms closed across their chest ran nearly as fast as when running with their normal arm That would arm look motion. even weirder. That would. Does, <laughs> does this make you think of anything in particular when I first bring this up? Anything at all? It instantly made me think of Monty Python. Wasn't there something like the, the something of silly walks? Ministry of silly walks. Yeah. I thought of that. This would be like the Ministry of Silly Running to watch. This. I would just like to it see this study. It would be hilarious. Like, okay, I want you to put your hands in your pockets. <laughs> We're going to run a marathon. <laughs> now cross your arms. Now you carry a tray filled with pizza. I, mean, I don't know what they were doing exactly. What a bizarre study. Surveys and studies and such brought to you by Mintervention.com. Are you looking for an energy drink that's natural, lasts longer, has no dyes, no artificial flavorings, and no sugar? Blitz Energy Drink is the answer. With only 10 calories per serving and 200 milligrams of caffeine, our formula will help increase your focus, endurance, mood, and energy levels. Order now at drinkblitzenergy.com. Use promo code RADIO20 to save 20% and get free shipping on any canister. Drinkblitzenergy.com. Promo code RADIO20. That's drinkblitzenergy.com. Did you know? Brought to you by RadioTravelGroup.com. Heidi, did you know that Twitter co-founder Jack Dorsey had a reaction to Elon Musk and buying his company? He chose to express himself in the form of song. Oh, I would love to see he, this just so I can laugh at it. Was, it was uh, the song Radiohead uh, song in the form of a Radiohead song. It doesn't say which one. Uh, oh, hey, it does I have here. a feeling. No, no, no. Here, no, no, no. Dorsey seemed to show his support for Musk by tweeting out a song, Everything in Its Right Place by Radiohead. Okay, I just had to oh, read a little okay. further. Before Musk's purchase, Dorsey still owned a little more than 2% of Twitter. So, And then when uh, when when Elon Musk bought it, uh, then he tweeted out the Radiohead song, Everything in Its Right Place. Okay. I really struggled to read through that for some just reason. Just a little bit, yeah. <laughs> Can I just take a deep breath, find my reading glasses? Oh, I'm wearing them. Oh, that's not good. All right. Hey, we don't know everything, but now we know this. Thanks for listening to The John and Heidi Show. Now, big screen, little screen, brought to you by ChannelSurferTV.com. Batwoman's time in Gotham is coming to an end. The CW has canceled the DC comic drama after just three seasons. Um, I know there's some folks that really liked it, but apparently not enough. Cancellation comes a month after the third season finale aired, and they say that uh, that led to speculation the network could pair back on other scripted series as well. I have after, not seen it, so I don't have an After opinion. a decade of waiting, fans will finally get the first look at Avatar 2, 
The trailer is out, I believe, this week or next week. In the story, it says next week, but I might have got this story last week. So Avatar I'm two. Disney has announced that the, the trailer. first one was awful. Wait, I never. You didn't see it, did you? Yes, Troy made me watch it. Okay, I think that's something completely different. Disney announced uh, Avatar: The Way of Water will debut uh, <laughs> exclusively in theaters before showing wow. of Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, which opens Friday. The trailer. Will be released online in the following week. Footage from this uh, is online. All the details, everything else in the show notes for today at John and Heidi Show.com. Join us in October for The Sands, a week of music and fun that's been described as the best week ever by many guests. This year, we have more icons and more fun. Loverboy, Belinda Carlisle, Lou Graham, Vanilla Ice, Samantha Fox, Firehouse, and many more already on the schedule. Plus, more announcements coming soon. Plan to join us October 25th through the 30th at Planet Hollywood Beach Resort Cancun. This all-inclusive event will be the time of your life. Learn more now at radiotravelgroup.com. Now your scoop of the day comes your way courtesy of bettercreditcards.com. Uh, this story is really kind of scary uh, because it's a scam that I think anybody, almost anybody, would have fallen for. So I'm not on TikTok. Heidi's not on TikTok. But this story is being shared on TikTok. A TikToker is warning people about a hotel room service scam that cost one family about $6,000. Whoa. So this TikToker out of Toronto told his 1.8 million followers that a family was staying at a hotel and they ordered room service using the dad's debit card. No, that's not uncommon. People do that all, right. all the time. Correct. In the story, which is now uh, on YouTube, uh, not on YouTube, on TikTok, is over 2 million views. Uh, the TikToker shares that the family was, this story, he, when he shared it, he was in front of an image of a Holiday Inn Express, although the location of the incident has right. not been and made public. they do not have room service, just so everybody's I'm just clear. saying that, that it's not been made public, right. so I don't know where it really was. The story is that after calling to place the order and providing the dad's card, the family waited for like an hour and a half. They finally called the front desk to say, hey, do you know when our food's going to get here? And that's when they were told, we don't have room service. Whoa. Hmm. Turns out, when he logged into Too his late. banking app, six grand was missing from his account. They found out that in the, in the rooms, somebody had slipped a bunch of room service menus under the door, but that's they were fakes. horrible. So they slipped them under the door. These scammers did. They called the number on the menus, not the ones in the hotel room. Well, because there were none in the yeah. hotel room. Once you give them your credit card info, they can take the money out of your account like they Yikes. did. Yikes. Online commenters agreed, saying, this trick is much more common than you'd expect. Apparently, this is happening all over the place. So be very, very, very careful before you give your credit card to anybody. Scoop of the day comes your way, courtesy of BetterCreditCards.com. Are you ready to enjoy a little slice of paradise? Check out this beautiful family-owned, professionally managed vacation rental in sunny Poipu, Kauai, Hawaii. Our family stayed recently and we absolutely loved it. The area is so beautiful and the vacation rental has room for up to six guests. Why stay in hotel rooms when you can all enjoy your own area in a vacation rental? Visit Hawaii and make your trip to this tropical paradise one to remember. Learn more at radiotravelgroup.com. That's radiotravelgroup.com. Thank you for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Wednesday. Our guest today is a writer for a very popular TV show, Family Guy. He's also got a new book out. We're going to chat about that. Gary Janetti, how are you, sir? I'm good. How are you, John? I am fantastic. And congrats to you on the early success of the new book, Start Without Me. I'll be there in a minute. I love the title. Oh, thanks. Appreciate it. This looks like a really fun idea for a book. Let's talk a little bit about what folks can expect in the book. You know, it's just the book is a bunch of essays, kind of uh, like stories from my childhood. I grew up in Queens in the 70s and 80s. And then it's also a couple of um, essays about, you know, things that um, kind of annoy me. Like I have a commencement address in there. I give the one that I feel like people should get when they graduate as a commencement address and that gives them the things you really kind of need to know. My version of a TripAdvisor review, stuff like that, a little bit with the um, attitude of Family Guy kind of peppered throughout, maybe. And the TV program Family Guy is such a funny program. And again, that's something that's been on quite a while now. You guys must have a blast at work every single day. Yeah. We do. Everybody is great. I, you know, I've been there since the first episode, so um, it's 
uh, yeah, like, God, it's been over 20 years now. And there are some, you know, obviously not everybody's been there <laughs> for that long, but there are uh, uh, several of us that have been there since the very beginning and people that have been there obviously, you know, 10, 15 years and stuff. So it's an unusual circumstance that people work on a TV show for that many years together and get along so well. So it really is uh, a unique kind of situation. When you first signed on for that program, there's no way to know if it's going to be successful or not. And this program has been such an amazing thing. It was on, it was off, then it's back on again. What a success story. Yeah, twice. It actually was canceled. But no, I had no idea. Actually, before Family Guy, I had been on a bunch of shows that you would have never heard of that all you know disappeared quickly. But I was told, this is going to be huge. This is going to be huge. You should do this show. And I listened, and they weren't. And then Family Guy came along, and I responded. I got a VHS tape. It was a seven-minute presentation of it, and I saw there was a bit of Stewie, and he said something like, you know, what's the juice you're staring at? It's tuna fish and nothing else. When he's blowing a blowtorch at Lois, and I was so taken with him. I was like, this is funny. I like this. I don't, I don't care. I want to do something that is my sensibility and that I think is super funny. And at the beginning, you know, the show wasn't successful, so we were all just trying to make each other laugh. Everybody was just kind of trying to amuse each other, and it was, it was like we were almost making it, you know, for us, because nobody had, <laughs> was either watching it, and then it takes a year before it even gets on the air for the first year when you're writing it. It wasn't until the second time it was canceled that it started um, in the third season that people started watching it on DVDs and um, then it kind of came back. And um, I went from telling people I wrote a family guy to them saying, what's that? Yeah. To a few years later <laughs> saying, oh my God, you write on family guy. I'm like, when did that, when did that change? Well, I've been doing that for a while. You guys just didn't know about it yet. <laughs> yeah, but it's nice, but it, it shows, you know, you do what you think is funny and what, what you think is, um, you know, not what, you know, other people think is. And Seth always had a very clear idea of what that show was and, and the humor in that show. And it's because of him that it, you know, has, without that, it would not have had any kind of, you know, longevity like it has. And one of the things that I got to say is absolutely fascinating for Family Guy, the number of times some sort of topic is in the news. And as I'm scrolling through, there'll be, a meme that's a Family Guy meme. There'll be a clip that's a Family Guy clip. There'll be a GIF that somebody created that's a Family Guy GIF. And it, sometimes it's almost like you have something for every single scenario, almost like the writers of Family Guy are predicting what's going to happen next, I guess. Yeah, I know. It's weird. The Simpsons, I know, gets the same thing, too. I know. It is kind of strange the way things work out like that. And sometimes there are things that I see that I don't even remember having seen. You know, so many people kind of work on the show and Sometimes you don't work on a certain episode. You work on some more than others or whatever. And I'll see stuff where people will quote things to me. And I'm like, I don't even remember that. <laughs> and let's remind folks where they can find your new book. It's called Start Without Me. I'll be there in a minute. Where can folks find it? It's available in um, bookstores. You can get it on Amazon, your indie bookseller. But yeah, everywhere where you get books. Uh, it just came out yesterday. So if you get it, I hope you like it. I'm looking here at some of the early reviews, and they're all very, very positive. So, Gary, congratulations on the early success of Start Without Me. I'll be there in a minute. Ah, uh, Thank you so much. Again, our guest today, Gary Janetti. He is one of the writers for Family Guy, and he's got a new book out. Just recently came out. It's called Start Without Me. I'll be there in a minute. I'll throw a link to it in the show notes for today at johnandheidyshow.com. What can I say that I haven't already said about bettercreditcards.com? It's a website. You go there to get a better credit card. Okay, that's really probably all I need to say for most of you, but I still have time left, so how about this? At bettercreditcards.com, we have different kinds of credit cards, some with better points and perks, some designed to help you build your credit. Whatever stage of life you happen to be in, we will want to help. Give yourself a little credit. BetterCreditCards.com. That's BetterCreditCards.com. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? Oranges are not even in the top 10 list of foods when it comes to vitamin C levels. A lot of people think of that for vitamin really? C. Really? Uh, it's funny that I'm sharing this on National Orange Juice Day, but yeah, not even <laughs> in the top 10. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? Russia has 11 time zones. France has 12 Okay. It's very weird. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? There are about two tablespoons of sugar in a bag of cotton candy. Hmm. It's kind of all there is in there, really. Fun and air. Fun fact for you, Heidi. I was going to say, to me, two tablespoons doesn't seem like a whole lot when you look yeah, at how the, much cotton air. candy oh, is. It's all the air. Yeah, it's, yeah it's pretty amazing. All right. Hey, did you hear me say fun fact for you, Heidi? <laughs> <laughs> What's that, John? <laughs> America's first bank robber. 
uh, back in 1798 deposited the money money right back into the same bank. <laughs> oh, funny. <laughs> That's how I get caught. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? A pound of potato chips costs 200 times more than a pound of potatoes. Hmm. Oh, yeah, I suppose. And our final fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? Getting a single tattoo can temporarily weaken your immune system, but getting several tattoos can strengthen it. That's why people usually get more than one. That's why I'm so healthy. (laughs) All right, several fun facts. Now you know. Thanks for listening to The John and Heidi Show. Are you looking for an energy drink that's natural, lasts longer, has no dyes, no artificial flavorings, and no sugar? Blitz Energy Drink is the answer. With only 10 calories per serving and 200 milligrams of caffeine, our formula will help increase your focus, endurance, mood, and energy levels. Order now at drinkblitzenergy.com. Use promo code RADIO20 to save 20% and get free shipping on any canister. DrinkBlitzEnergy.com. Promo code RADIO20. That's DrinkBlitzEnergy.com. Time now for the Mint Mobile Question of the Day. Brought to you by Mintervention.com. 21% of us admit that we've done this to end a conversation on the phone. What is it? Act like your phone cut out. No, that's not it. Is that why your phone's always cutting out on me? It's terrible service. <laughs> so, <John. laughs> it's <laughs> no, that's terrible. not the answer, by the way. But now I really think I Twenty one percent of us admit that we've yawned before on a phone call oh, in order yep. to get that conversation to wrap up a little bit. So does it does that work? Have you ever done that? I've done that. Did it work? No, not with you. <laughs> I'm like, you sound kind of tired. You should probably get more sleep at night. Hey, did that, I want to remind you, here's another fun story. <laughs> All right, hey, the Mint Mobile question of the day comes your way, courtesy of Mintervention.com. Join us in October for The Sands, a week of music and fun that's been described as the best week ever by many guests. This year, we have more icons and more fun. Loverboy, Belinda Carlisle, Lou Graham, Vanilla Ice, Samantha Fox, Firehouse, and many more already on the schedule. Plus, more announcements coming soon. Plan to join us October 25th through the 30th at Planet Hollywood Beach Resort Cancun. This all-inclusive event will be the time of your life. Learn more now at Radio Travel group.com now some weird news brought to you by weirdgiftoftheday.com a popular youtuber had his pilot's license revoked after intentionally crashing his airplane and filming his parachute escape for views on youtube oh yeah that's yeah in november really bad trevor idea. jacob an olympic snowboarder turned youtuber you youtuber <laughs> YouTuber. YouTuber. He uh, crashed a small propeller airplane into the mountains in California's Los Padres National Forest. The exact moment his propeller stopped working was caught on camera, as was his jump from the plane and deployment of a life-saving parachute. Three weeks later, he posted a YouTube video titled, I Crashed My Plane. It quickly went viral, amassing over 2 million views. Following a probe, though, the FAA revoked his license, pointing out that he never even tried to restart the plane. And it was amazing that he had all these cameras attached to the exterior of the plane to capture what happened. Wow. So they believe this was 100% intentional. Mm -hmm. I wonder if he tried to get everything paid for by insurance, too. I don't know how that will go. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's bad. Don't do, just don't do all the stuff they're doing for your views. Don't do it. Weird News, brought to you by weirdgiftoftheday.com. Time now for the list, brought to you by bettercreditcards.com. I love it when people submit lists like this one. Uh, Signs you drink too much coffee. (laughs) You drink a lot more coffee than I do. Signs you drink too much coffee. You grind your coffee beans in your mouth. (laughs) Uh, You lick the coffee pot clean. That'd be a sign. Uh, You answer the doorbell before people knock. (laughs) Uh, I'm sorry, you answer the door before people knock. Another sign that you drink too much coffee, you ski uphill. Uh, you haven't blinked since the last lunar eclipse. <laughs> Signs you might drink too much coffee. You've worn the finish off the coffee table. Uh, you're the employee of the month at a local coffee shop, and you don't even work there. Uh, sign you drink too much coffee. Your eyes can stay open while you sneeze. Yeah, that would be that'd yeah. be bad. Another sign you drink too much coffee. You chew other people's fingernails. Ew, <laughs> that's disgusting. Yeah. Your T-shirt says decaffeinated coffee is the devil's blend. 
And the final one, you can jumpstart your car without jumper cables. <laughs> <laughs> Several signs you drink too much coffee. It's the list brought to you by BetterCreditCards.com. Are you ready to enjoy a little slice of paradise? Check out this beautiful family-owned, professionally managed vacation rental in sunny Poipu, Kauai, Hawaii. Our family stayed recently and we absolutely loved it. The area is so beautiful and the vacation rental has room for up to six guests. Why stay in hotel rooms when you can all enjoy your own area in a vacation rental? Visit Hawaii and make your trip to this tropical paradise one to remember. Learn more at radiotravelgroup.com. That's radiotravelgroup.com. Time now for the quote of the day. It comes your way, courtesy of insurancechicken.com. Uh, what do I have here? Oh, hey, uh, Joan Rivers is who our quote is from. Says, I liked her. I did too. Uh, we went to see her perform once. We and did. It, it, I like her better. I liked her a lot better on TV than I did in that performance. I felt right. it, it wasn't wasn't the best. So I was really sad about that. Uh, people say money is not the key to happiness, but I've always figured if you have enough money. You can have a new key made. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah, it's pretty good. All right. A quote from Joan Rivers today. Um, that is the quote of the day. It is, uh, comes your way courtesy of insurancechicken.com. If you would like to submit a quote, you can find a place to do that at the bottom of the page at johnandheidyshow.com. Thanks for listening to The John and Heidi Show on a Wednesday. John and Heidi. This portion of The John and Heidi Show is brought to you by The John and Heidi Show. That sounds kind of funny, but it's true. Go to your local radio station and ask them to start carrying The John and Heidi Show. Here's the best part. They can carry the show for free. They play a couple commercials, but it doesn't cost them anything every month. So if you know a radio station that could use a little bit of help, send them our way. Send them to johnandheidyshow.com. Again, johnandheidyshow.com. We would love to do a radio program in your community. Then you could listen to the podcast and listen to us on the radio. John and Heidi. We always like to wrap things up around here with good news, and I think this is good news. It comes your way courtesy of radiotravelgroup.com. Here's the, uh, the story today. A 90-year-old found her late husband's wedding ring under an apple tree 35 years after he lost it. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, Ann Kendrick said, Peter, he passed away 22 years ago, by the way. He lost his wedding band while he was working in their garden in 1987. The mother of seven discovered the ring April 23rd when she was clearing around the base of an apple tree. She said she was, quote, very excited to find the ring. Uh, of course. Added that her husband would have been as surprised as she was. Aww. She plans to wear the ring on a necklace in memory of her late husband. Uh, I wonder, she just found it working around the thing. I wonder if they tried using like a metal detector to they find this apparently thing. Apparently not. I have a friend who just bought a metal detector like two months ago. And it's been so fun to see the things that he's been finding. I'm, oh, I'm, really? I'm living vicariously through him on, you, on, Here not we on go. YouTube. Now on, we have uh, to get a metal detector. That's a, what's that other thing? Facebook on there. Because quite often he'll be posting, hey, look what I found. And it's like, usually it's just a bunch of junk, but a lot of like small coins. Right. But there were some really cool things too. And then my favorite thing is he posted, this is a friend of mine. Keep this in mind. He posted <laughs> on Facebook. Um, if you have a yard that you would let me come, he's looking for people with older homes. If you have got an older home and I can come over with my metal detector in your yard, <laughs> I'll bring you some beef jerky. <laughs> Okay. I was like, really? <laughs> Tyler, that's your <laughs> offer? <laughs> that would work for you. I would I'm for surprised me. you didn't tell him. I come did. on I said, over. come on over. It's not that old. But it was like, you know he's one of my friends, but he's he's offering up beef wow. turkey. <laughs> wow. All right. Time to say goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, everybody. Have a great day. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Wednesday.